Oops, yeah. Hornby Analog Controller Part 2. In my first part, I looked at the circuit board and tried to analyse it to find out how to make faults. Or to find faults, not make them, find them. Uh, what I did then was to draw this out. Maybe I didn't explain it clearly enough. Essentially what I've got here is this components. This one, this one's this. This is this and this is that. That's the link there. And then here we've got the changeover switch. So I suggested using a multimeter. Any old multimeter should do. It shouldn't need to be anything special. Here I've got a little analog meter which I've got set here, I don't know if it's obvious or not, to 20 volts. Can we get that a bit better there? Sorry, not 20, 50 volts. This only does 10 and 50 volts DC, so I've put it on the 50 volts DC range. And then I'm going to put the probes onto the circuit board so that I can measure the voltages. So to start with, what I have is the input here. So this, these two are the naught volt inputs. That's that and that. Then I have this one here, which should be the 19 volt input. So I put my probes to measure this. I put my probes either on there or there. They should both be the same. And onto there. And that should give me my 19 volts in. I can then come down and check each of these to check that I've got a voltage all the way down. It won't be 19 volts, it'll be somewhere around but not 19 volts. So that's what I've tried to show on this diagram. I can then come across, so for example if we have a look at the voltage regulator, the 7806, that's this here, then I can do the same sort of thing. Put my probes on. If I look here, the middle of the 7406 it should be no volts and this should be the incoming voltage. So what I do is to put that onto there, that onto there and that should give me my incoming voltage. I can then swap it over to the other side so that I'm still measuring no volts on the middle one but bring it across and touch there and that should give me 6 volts. So that is the 6 volts coming out which also comes round, right round, right round and down onto the middle of the chip. So let's have a look at the chip itself then. I could leave my 0 volts on there and put this down onto the middle pin of the chip and that then should give me my 6 volts again. And since the middle pin on the top row is 0 volts, I should be able to do that and get my 6 volts out. Hope that makes the first video a bit clearer. Right then, so what about this chip down at the bottom? This is the chip that does all the work. The LM324, the quad op amp. How does that actually work and what can we do to show that? Well, what I've done is to blow it up, boom, boom, uh, to make a larger picture of it to show how it's actually operating. And then come along and draw it out so that I've got a picture over the top. I find it difficult to mark it on the actual thing, so I've drawn it over the top and then tried to ascertain what the circuit is. Got problems with some of the wires tracks coming in uh, underneath because I can't see where they go on the chip and I haven't actually got the board. I could put a ohms meter across to test for continuity to see where they go but I've guessed and I think they might be reasonable guesses. So then looked on the internet found 
this site here uh, don't know if we can see this or not yep those people they've done a, a typical sort of diagram for the LM324 quad amp amp used to vary the speed in this case of a fan using a variable resistor down here they've used all four of the op amps for their circuit and they haven't got a reversing switch for the fan but on the Hornby they've used this to detect over a short circuit so this detects a short circuit so let's look at how I think it actually works we is that more or less right yep so how does it work well coming in at this side we have the 19 volts going in to the changeover switch and the motor here and then down at the bottom here we've got a FET transistor which switches the motor on and off connected down to ground via this sense resistor so as it's there the top yellow connection is to 19 volts the green bottom one is to the FET which will connect it down to 0 volts and if I change the direction the yellow wire at the top comes down onto the 0 volt rail and the green rail comes onto the 19 volt rail so that's the changeover switch so let's go back to the start where it begins what we have to start with is what's called the potential divider we've got 10k at the top 5k at the bottom and 6 volts all together so we can assume we're going to get 2 volts into this input of the operational amplifier we'll also get the 2 volts in to this input which is of the second amplifier operational amplifier so we've got 2 volts into both so the this input has got 2 volts and it looks at this input now if this input is greater than that input then the output goes positive if this input is greater than that input the output will go negative and wired as it is there what it will do is to produce a square wave on the output so this output here will produce a square wave we then put it into this operational amplifier which because it's got a capacitor on the feedback is going to change that square wave and change it into a triangular wave now the beauty of the triangular wave is if we just cut it at the bottom and then we will get a very narrow peak coming out as opposed to if we cut it at the top where it will become a lot wider peak so at the bottom you'll get very narrow peaks but at the top you'll get nice and wide peaks the frequency should be the same but the time that the output is on for is greater and that therefore acts as a higher voltage average higher voltage so we've got that coming well that triangular comes out of here but we have somehow to be able to cut that triangular wave to get our peaks and to do that we use this third operational amplifier and the point that it cuts it with is controlled by this variable resistor here which feeds in to this input and this other input here is the triangular wave so we've got a triangular wave coming in here the voltage from the variable resistor coming in here and that then gives us depending upon the voltage here gives us the different peaks coming out so slow narrow peak large wide peak
or something like that anyway. Right, the other thing is the switch, the high-low switch. How does that work? Essentially what we've got is two resistors. They've always got R10 in the circuit, which is a 47K resistor. But if we switch the switch, we also include this 100K in parallel with the 47 ohm resistor, 47 kilo ohm resistor. And that then sorts of gives us a resistor which is the single resistor which replaces those two of about 33k. So that then has a lower resistance than the 47. So therefore the voltage into the top of this voltage reg of this variable resistor will be higher and therefore we can potentially get a higher voltage out of here and therefore we can get more closer together pulses out of it. So that then is, is the high-low with the two resistors. Uh, this bottom of the variable resistor comes down to 0 volts via this 3K3 resistor. So this won't exactly be at 0 volts. But I don't know the value of the variable resistor so I can't really calculate that out. The output of this final op amp then goes to the LED via this resistor here and then into the FET to switch on and off the motor. So the motor is being switched on and off very fast at the same frequency but for different times depending upon where we put the variable resistor. Over here though we have a sense resistor. Now the sense resistor is between the source of the FET and no volts so there will be a current flowing through it and that current then because this is a very small resistor a 0 0.1 microfarad resistor it will have a small current flowing through it but it will develop a small volt well no it will have all the current flowing through it sorry it will have all the current flowing through it but because it's a low value it will only produce a low voltage across it uh, because V equals I times R and if R is very small then V is going to be small. So that then feeds back around here. Now if we get too large a current flowing through here the voltage across this will get greater. So if we come back down here we see that once again we've got a potential divider, a 4K7 and 180 ohms. So if we work that out, we find that we get something like 0.2 volts. So this is 0.2 volts across there. So this one has 0.2 volts in it. So as long as this is less than 0.2 volts, the output will be low. And as this output being low then can't go anywhere because of this diode. If however we pass too much current through it and the voltage here gets greater than 0.2 volts, then it will send a signal around here come into this and the output then will go high. When the output goes high, it goes through this diode and into this point here, overriding the variable resistor. And this will be high because this is high. The output will be higher than this. The output will be low and the transistor will stay off. So, by putting too much current through, we've sent feedback into this op amp, which has switched this op amp off. Not only does it switch that op amp off, but it's got a diode feeding back into it. So as soon as this goes high, this diode feeds back into here, keeping this high, and therefore this stays high, and this will stay high until we disconnect the power. So we have to turn the power off to reset this 
but not only turn the power off but because we've got a capacitor across here this C6 this is going to charge up so even if we turn the power off then this is still going to have some charge across it and if we turn the power straight back on again this will have a charge that will turn this high that will be higher than 0.2 volts that will change this high and will keep that high so this will keep the power supply off if we switch it back on again before this C6 has discharged C6 will discharge by going through this resistor here round and through this resistor here so this is a 10k resistor this one essentially won't matter because it's very small but this 10k means that the C6 depending upon the size of C6 which I don't know it will take time to turn off so essentially I think that's the circuit for this uh, and uh, called analog control although it uses as far as I can see pulse width modulation to control the FET transistor which I would call digital although of course we're using op amps to create the digital rather than a microcontroller which I would have expected to have found in here but all in all it's a fascinating really interesting and provided it's used correctly I can't see any problems with this I think it's a nice little circuit really enjoy pulling it in bits and hope that explains all about it so bye now bye